jellyfish moving gracefully through the water can be a beautiful sight. Brotz discusses that jellyfish play a healthy role in food webs and have been a part of the ocean's ecosystem since before the time of the dinosaurs. Parsons and Lally claim that recent explosions in jellyfish populations may indicate that our oceans are in a less than desirable state due to human activity. Many people around the world rely on the ocean for food. National Geographic and the Key explain that the box and Irukandji jellyfish inhabit Australian waters and are two of the most deadly creatures on the planet. The box jellyfish can kill in minutes. Their stings are so excruciating that victims have been known to go into shock and drown due to the pain. Stings from the Irukandji, however, often start out only as a mild irritation, followed by escalated blood pressure and possible heart failure. The idea of our oceans brimming with these gelatinous creatures is a disturbing one. Zimmerman has discussed the possibility of marine turtles saving humanity from rising jellyfish numbers. Five out of the seven species of ocean turtle consume jellyfish. However, the world's turtles are threatened, with all species listed as vulnerable or endangered. The CSIRO explained that plastic poses a deadly threat to turtles. Floating plastic debris can bear a strong resemblance to jellyfish and can be mistaken for food. Plastic pollution can kill turtles by causing internal blockages, by suffocation or entanglement. It is estimated that at least one-third of the world's turtles have ingested plastic. While plastic aids jellyfish by reducing natural predators, it has another unexpected benefit for jellyfish. Brotz claims that jellyfish polyps have shown a habitual preference for man-made materials, including glass and plastic, over materials native to the marine environment. Marine litter is not the only factor that pos positively affects jellyfish at the expense of sea turtles. Parsons and Lally identify pollution, overfishing, eutrophication and global warming as probable causes for escalating jellyfish numbers, while Cairns Turtle Research and Van Houten, Smith, Dahlia and Kawichi cite these same factors as being harmful for sea turtles. Eutrophication benefits jellyfish by providing nutrients and reducing competitors and predators. Eutrophication can be caused by several factors, including agricultural runoff and sewage, resulting in water that is depleted of oxygen and contains high levels of nitrogen. Brotz explains that jellyfish can survive these hypoxic conditions, whereas many other marine animals cannot. It is global warming, however, which threatens to eliminate marine turtles. Tomino, Genovart, Palladino, Spotilla and Aura predict that by the end of the century, marine turtles will be doomed to face extinction. Sex of hatchlings is believed to be determined by temperature. By the year 3000, it is expected that all ocean turtles will be female. However, Brotz discusses that warmer waters seem to increase jellyfish production. There have been several government schemes to try to reduce pollution. Australians have been offered incentives to install clean energy in the form of solar, wind or hydro systems. The CSIRO seek to educate the public along with Shell employees about the dangers of marine litter. And in Tasmania, retailers can no longer supply customers with plastic shopping bags. However, is this all too little too late? Is humanity willing to reduce carbon emissions, stop using plastic, recycle and find better ways to manage waste? Or have we already doomed ourselves to oceans overpopulated with bobbing, stinging, gelatinous creatures?